This is Bob Chandra from BBD at his studios in Delhi. Not much happening on the Chinese front. Long meeting. No results. I think no results. Uh, none that we've heard of. No earth shattering movements. Nothing that the MEA uh, person being embedded in these talks uh, really either enhanced or delivered. But anyway, some news that we can discuss and talk about. There was a uh, there was an article in the Hindustan Times today which says Chinese domestic propaganda laced with 1962 references. Chinese social media and websites have lately been peppered with news articles and analysis on how well prepared the PLA is to take on the Indian Army, referencing the Sino, uh, Sino India 62 war as precedent. Oh God, this is like comparing chalk with cheese. The 62 army from China were hardcore Maoists. The 2020 army of the flabby Xi Jinping are as flabby as Xi Jinping himself. Let's not get swayed by this stupid propaganda. This is second rate Hollywood. Third rate Bollywood. These guys need a lesson in, in propaganda now. What happens next? Prem Punita writes, China encroaches upon Nepal land, builds infrastructure. The PLA has constructed at least nine buildings on the Nepal side of the Nepal-China border in the remote Humla district of Nepal. Here, I think India really, instead of sitting on the sidelines, must bring out its social media in Nepal must bring this news out, out into the ne Nepalese citizens to show how the current leadership of Nepal, which includes Oli, which seems to be in trouble again, as this article suggests, to set rules for Oli, Nepal party panel meets today, sig signaling fresh trouble for Prime Minister K.P. Sharma. Oli, the central secretariat of the, of the ruling Nepal Communist Party, is meeting Tuesday to decide rules and norms that the Prime Minister should follow while effecting changes to the Cabinet. We cannot let Oli get away with it. We've done enough of the pampering. It's time to play hardball. The Nepalese Congress was always some sort aligned to India. We should again re-establish those connections and move from a hands-off approach to a slightly hands-on approach. A better news, small article, India, Maldives launch cargo service. India and the Maldives on Monday launched a cargo ferry service connecting Tutikaran and Cochin ports with Malay with the aim of cutting costs and time. The launch came a day after India provided a 20-year soft loan of 250 million to the government of Maldives. China has, is out. We need to close the door so that they cannot re-enter again through Yameen. Yameen is the guy with the help of, uh, we have to absolutely ensure that Yameen is no longer allowed to grab power through illegal means like he did the last time. What's happening on the geostrategic front? UAE takes up carbine deal diplomatically after calls to cancel it. You know, at the end of the day, I understand Atam Nirbhar, but here it is important to note this company belongs to the Edge Group, which is fully owned by the UAE government. And not only that, it has the company said, has confirmed, issued on Monday, Karkal said it has already identified land, facilities and local partners to commence production of the car 816 carbine in India as it had been selected by the defense ministry. But to understand here, they are going to do it completely in India. In a sense, UAE must be treated like, not a state of India, but like an immediate outreach of India. Look at it. the UAE connections are solid. We are the largest population there. Not so far back into the, into the past, Indian currency used to be the, the, the local currency there. 
we have incredible ties, strategic strategic uh, relationship. This is one thing. We cannot allow the local Babus to finger the deal. Otherwise, FDI in defense is only going to be a pipe dream forever. The expose done by Indian Express is going to get solid as you go as as a report comes out in uh, the Wall Street Journal. Bank suspected illegal activity, but activity but processed dollar two trillion anyway, and India is a huge part of this. Worms are going to come out of the woodwork. Let's see who gets clobbered. But as we move on, let's talk about something that's disturbing in the economy. There's been some adjustment in the stock market, which is, you know, projecting a, a, a rosy future. However, let's look at what it says. Stephen Roach writes, America's coming double dip. The double dip is not a dance. It is the time honored tendency of the U.S. economy to relapse into recession after a temporary recovery. Over the years, it has happened far more often than not, northwards, notwithstanding frothy financial markets, which currently are discounting the nirvana of an uninterrupted V-shaped recovery. There is compelling case for another double dip in the aftermath of the America's devastating COVID-19 shock. We are celebrating the V-shape. There is no V-shape, folks. It's going to be a V-shape that is not going to last very long, at least not what, uh, not in the United States. Not in the United States, definitely not in India. So where he ends up saying, therein lies the case for a double dip, partial and, and unsynchronized normalization in the aftermath of the first economic shock, shock on record signals, lingering vulnerability in the US economy and failure to contain the virus underscores the distinct possibility of aftershocks. The rhythms of history suggest a very different outcome, which means it's back. There is no V-shaped recovery, folks. We are back in trouble. We have to be ready, as our articles that have come out subsequently suggest. There is uh, United States, Will Pavia from New York writes in the uh, Financial Times, standard of living falling fast in America. Then there's a report by, by uh, Anna Maria Androtis, pandemic upends middle class family finances. Then you have report which says by Jenny Sernay's uh, Suran, Capital One cuts card limits amid jobless aid impasse. This is one of the critical signs. Even in 2008, this is the first thing that happened is slash everybody's limit. Capital One is doing it in the United States now. The another news by Patrick Thomas, layoffs resume as firms reassess outlook. Moves suggest the economic fallout of pandemic may last longer than expected. Things are not hunky-dory in India too. As Rajeshwari Gupta writes, the impossible trilemma with high inflation, capital inflows, currency appreciation, tough decisions are needed. Recently released report, the Reserve Bank of India mentioned that an appreciating currency will help contain imported inflationary pressure. This has given rise to a fervent debate as to whether the RBI is no longer able to handle the impossible trilemma. One of the corners of the trilemma has to do with capital inflows. In the first few months of the pandemic and the associated lockdown, the Indian economy witnessed a net outflow of foreign portfolio investment. However, this trend has reversed in the recent months as policymakers in the developed world have, have adopted stimulative measures. Indian capital markets received a net FPI inflow of close to 10 billion as foreign investors returned to the stock market. The debt markets have turned positive. India also received close to 17 billion of foreign direct investment during April, July. At the same time, the combination of weak economic growth, lackluster domestic demand and low oil prices have shifted the current account balance from deficit into surplus. Imports have fallen more than exports, suggesting that India is doing worse than its trading partners. This is important. This brings us to the another corner of the trilemma. Currency stability. In the face of rising appreciation, appreciation pressure, the RBI has been actively intervening. It has been buying dollars both in the spot and in the forward markets. In May and June, RBI's net dollar purchase in the spot market was to the tune of 14.4 billion. When the RBI buys dollars in the FX market, it sells rupees. This increases the domestic money supply and is therefore inflationary. And we are, we are beginning to see that. 
but the RBI has not been absorbing the liquidity created through dollars purchased. It has been adding to it by buying government securities through its open market op operations and targeted liquidity injection programs such as TLRO. As a result, liquidity has soared, reaching as much as rupees 8 trillion at one point. So things, RBI is finding it difficult to cope up with what's happening in the in the macroeconomic situation. And as Omkar Omkar Goswami writes, it shoots and leaves. India was going through steadily deteriorating growth for eight successive quarters before the lockdown, with the real GDP growth falling from 8.2 percent in the January March. 2018 to 3.1. The main reason for this dropping growth was the inadequate investments. Now, what he says is based on these estimates, my forecast for annual GDP growth in 2020-21 is minus 12.9. Not very hunky growth. A report in the Financial Express agrees. Recovery not fully entrenched, says Das. Another article says. Credit growth fails to pick up despite government measures. However, and we need to really get our FDI situation in order. It says, here it says, after saying no, Toyota says yes to expansion plans in India. But this shows a disconcerting picture of our policy. Right? If we want FDI, we have to ensure that these, you know, we don't have to, that obviously it shows that there was something wrong as far as taxation, as far as duties are concerned. I'm glad. Toyota is coming back again. However, you know, some people continue to keep the faith, like Silver Lake, Silver Lake and its growing pool of India investments. Global Technology Investment Fund Silver Lake has made three bets worth 2.3 billion. You have another article says India's first bullet train project faces resistance from farmers over compensation issues. We got to get rid of that. This is a techno 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 technology technology exhibition exhibitor from Japan. We cannot afford to let this drop. I mean, a lot of people think this is something that is unaffordable, but I think it is pretty. The solar area continues to hum. KKR India's Inwit Ice FRB assets. India grid in talks with uh, photo ratio renewable ventures for possible 750 crore solar power project deal. Continue to hum in vaccine. India's vaccine pipeline could be one of the largest in the world. Tightening, tightening screws on China. Government tightens vision over ASEAN. ASEAN has been used by Chinese to dump products. This is a, a tap we need to close, and I'm sure the ASEAN understand. Back in trouble again, government may defer AI sale, reduce debt to sweeten the deal. Air India, Air India value bidders back to dry drawing board. And this is kind of sad, right? This is absolutely sad. However, this is exciting news. We have a, a car val to see Uttam Galwa deal next month. So a consortium led by the US now is interested in steel. Interesting. Another big thing, tipping point, electric cars get closer on price. This is also amazing news for India. Then one day Bharat train bid only for Desi companies, but here the Desi companies have been redefined. Anything that's in India, manufacturing plant in India, great news. Jai Hind.